everybody, it's Dr. Joe, and today I'm going to show you a whole body stretching routine. Or maybe I'm super Joe today. So I'm going to do each stretch for 30 seconds twice on each side. If you're looking for a little bit of a shorter routine, just 30 seconds for each stretch, you can click on the link up here. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert! Disclaimer alert! So a couple things that you need. You're going to need a chair to keep your balance while you're doing some standing stretches and while we're doing some sitting stretches you're going to need that chair. You're also going to need a stretch strap or a towel or a belt to do some of the stretching with that. I've got my timer going. I'm going to start doing the warm up because you always want to warm up those muscles to keep them nice and warm so they're not cold while you're stretching. So I'm going to start that and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what's important to do while you're stretching. So I'm going to start the button. Our two minutes are going, so with the warm-up, you can just either do marching with your knees. If you're a little more high level and you don't really have an uh, injury, you can do something like jogging in place. You can do a jumping jack kind of motion. You can do kicking your legs back. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of march while I'm talking to you, just kind of loosening up the, the lower body first, getting it nice and warm. So. When you're stretching, you want to make sure you're relaxed. We're going to focus on specific muscles. So you're really just trying to make sure that you're focusing on that muscle. You're not bouncing. You're really relaxed and you're just doing nice, deep breathing while you're doing it. So just make sure that you're concentrating on that. You're not going to the point of pain. You're just going to the point of the stretch. So that's about a minute of the lower extremity. So now let's do the arms, the upper extremity. So with this one, you can just do some circles going forward. You can do circles going backwards. You can do big circles. You can do little circles. You can kind of do a little bouncing back and forth, doing some hugs and things like that. And you can still move your feet if you want to, just to keep everything nice and warm. But anytime you stretch, you want to hold that stretch for at least 30 seconds. That's really what they found gets to the point where those GTOs, those gold, Golgi tendon organs finally let go and relax those muscles. So you want to really hold them for at least 30 seconds. You can hold them longer, but you don't really have to. So you can just kind of go front to back. You can do a little jumping jack motion with your arms, but you can tell I'm getting warmed up nice and nice and warm. So we've got about 10 seconds left. So we're going to go from head to toe. So we're going to start off with the neck and just kind of get everything loosened up there. So now we're just going to take that little 10 second break. Actually, it's starting into the exercise stretch. So what we're going to do now is just some stretching of the neck, doing some circles. You don't have to go all the way around if you don't want to. Just make sure you're alternating. So if you want to go just like a, a side to side like this, you might get some popping. That's okay as long as it's not painful popping. Um, that's pretty normal because you're just kind of loosening everything up. So now we're going to take a little 10 second break and then we're going to go into stretching our upper traps in just a second. So remember these are the ones where you want to really relax those muscles. So the upper trap stretch, push one side down, take the other hand and just gently pull over this way. So just holding that stretch for about 30 seconds, nice and relaxed. You should feel that stretch right through here. Nice good stretch. It shouldn't be painful. It should be nice and relaxed. Some people like to take nice deep breaths while they're doing it. Three, two, one, and then relax. So I like to alternate sides back and forth. So the next one's going to be going to the other side Three, just to give the other side a little bit of a break. One. Pushing that hand down and then going over. Again, just kind of pulling until you feel tension, not till you feel pain. If you feel pain, bring it back up a little bit. By pushing this hand down, that keeps that shoulder down just to get that nice stretch. If you're not really pushing down or if you're not sitting down, then what happens is that shoulder tends to come up and you're not really stretching those upper straps, traps very well. So just pushing there. So taking a little break, now we're going to do another one on each side. So just that little break in between to kind of reset Three, the muscles two, and then one. pushing that fist down and going back over. Getting 
getting that nice stretch all the way through, nice and relaxed. And then hold that stretch. You should feel it. Sometimes people feel it all the way up here, all the way down into that shoulder. So just nice and relaxed, holding that stretch there. So we're gonna take that little 10 second rest. We're gonna do another one on the other side and then we're gonna go into some chin tucks and I'm gonna grab the chair and sit down for those. One. Exercise one. All right, so pushing down and then pulling towards the other side. So just getting that nice, good stretch, holding it. A lot of times if you have neck problems in general, this upper trap stretch is really good to do because when you hold a lot of stress in your neck and shoulders, if you're working on a computer all day long, these muscles get really, really, really tight. So just nice and relaxed and stretching it all the way through. So if you're going, you should feel a little bit of a release after a little bit. So let's take a little break. So now some stuff with the chair and we're gonna do some chin tucks now. Just bringing that chin backwards, not tucking it in, but bringing the whole head back. So if you see here, I put my finger here and pull all the way back. You don't have to hold that for 30 seconds, but we're gonna go through all the stretches for 30 seconds. So pull back for about five seconds and then relax. I like putting my finger on my chin because it just kind of gives me a target to know how far away I'm Two, going. One, and then yes. relax. So we're gonna do that set one more time and then we'll move on to the shoulders. Three, two, Here we go. Finger on the chin and pull back. And you can see that if you hold it for about five seconds and then you come back, there's a little bit of space there, which shows that my, my neck muscles are nice and tight. So this stretch is really, really good. I love doing these if I'm working at the computer or at the desk for a while. because so when we work on the desk we or on the computer, we tend to lean forward and then those muscles get really tight. So this does a great job of just kind of resetting those neck muscles and loosening them up a lot for you. So the next one going into the shoulders is gonna be a posterior capsular stretch. So just kind of opening up the shoulders now, working Three, those. Two, so you're just gonna take your arm and bring it all the way across. So just holding this stretch. Some people hold their hand facing them. Some people do a fist like this. Some people just kind of hold on to their elbow. This is another one where you might feel a lot of popping in your shoulder when you first pull it across. If the popping is not painful, that's usually okay. It's when it pops and then it's painful is when you don't want to do it. But again, these stretches should be Three. tension, but not pain. So shaking that out and then we're going to just alternate back and forth because I like alternating so you give each side a little bit of a break. So then we're going to take the other side and just bring it across. Some people like this hand to be facing this way. I kind of like it facing this way. Some people just make a fist down this way. That's okay too. Um, you don't really want it going that way because my shoulder popped uncomfortably just doing that because that's putting it in an impinged position. So if you have your palm facing that way, that's usually a really good way to stretch it. And you can just feel that stretch all the way through there. So this is another one. It's just really nice to kind of get that shoulder moving and loosened up and get everything nice and relaxed. So we'll go back and we'll do another one on each side. And in between, you can kind of shake it out a little bit. I always tell people just to shake it out some, and then it gives you just enough time then to go back into the other stretch. So just holding that really nicely. Now, if you do have some shoulder issues, some shoulder pain, you're probably not gonna feel comfortable pulling it all the way across like this. So even if you just go to here, that's okay. And if you wanna just kind of place your hand here, if that's comfortable as well, and then push that way, you, you can do that as well. It doesn't have to be cranking it all the way across your body because it does pinch in there a little bit. So if you already have some pain, that might be a little extreme. So then just kind of shaking it out again, getting it nice and stretched out. And then going back over. So again, hand this way if you want to up this way, getting that nice stretch. If you bend the elbow, it changes the stretch a little bit, but not enough to make a big difference. So you can do it again, whichever way you want to. And then you're gonna have loosey goosey arms, nice and stretched out. So the next one, we're gonna do a, a pec stretch or a chest stretch. So then we're gonna stretch it the other way. So we're just kind of doing 
opposite each way we're getting those main muscle groups just to get everything nice and loosened up so with a chest stretch you can do that a couple different ways but i like to do it where you can do it sitting or standing but you're just going to clasp your hands back behind you and what i'm doing is i'm pushing down and out and then pushing my chest forward Sometimes if you tuck your chin in a little bit too, that kind of gives you a, a double stretch and kind of stretches everything out a little bit more. But it's really important to do both, not just pushing down, not just your chest out, but pushing down and out and pushing your chest forward really gets those pec muscles, those chest muscles. So I'm feeling that stretch right through there when I do it. So really just then, you know, relaxing, shaking it out a little bit. Again, this is one that if you have an injury, it might be a little bit intense, so don't feel like you have to push so hard. You can just kind of clasp the hands, go back a little bit, and push forward. So you don't have to go as much as I am, even though if you don't have any injuries, this is a really good stretch, so pushing this way. But if you just want to do a little bit back pine and a little bit push ahead, that's going to give you a really good stretch as well. So getting that nice and loose and relaxed. So again, just opening up that chest area helps with the chest and the shoulders as well. So then you just kind of shake all that out. And now we're going to go into the triceps underneath. So um, really getting all those muscles around the shoulder area. And an easy way to do that is just put your arm up and grab that elbow pulling behind you. So with this one, my elbow is going back this way. So again, if this is tight or if you have a tight shoulder and injured shoulder, this might be all you're able to do. You might only be able to go right here and that's okay. But if you can eventually start pushing it back more, you're going to feel that stretch right in through there. And so sometimes people who have that triceps tendonitis, that injury, they're going to feel it right in there. So just kind of then shaking it out. And then again, we're going to go over to the other side. Three, two, one. So bringing it up and pulling back, getting that nice, gentle stretch, just right in there through that triceps area. And with your hand back behind, I usually just rest mine on top right there. You don't have to, you can just kind of let it hang, but I find it more comfortable if I just place it on that shoulder blade back there and give that nice push back. So that's always really nice and comfortable. Three, two, just kind of shaking it out, taking a little break, and then we're going to go back and do one more on Three, each side. Two, so that little one. pull and Exercise pushing one. back. So you can see here on this side how I'm just kind of placing it on that shoulder blade. If you don't have a lot of flexibility, again, you might not be able to get it there, and you can just kind of push it this way. Sometimes even if just people put their hand like this without pushing, they're gonna get a little stretch through there if it's tight. So you can do that as well. You don't necessarily have to push all the way back because remember, you wanna feel that tension, but you don't want there to be any pain in there. So then just kind of shaking it out and we'll do one more on the other side. Three, and then two, elbow one. up. Exercise one. And then nice pull back. Sometimes I'll pull a little back and inwards and that will get those triceps just a little bit more if you need a, mo a little bit more of a stretch. So it's almost at an angle this way versus just straight back. It's kind of in towards your ear a little bit. And um, that helps get all the tricep heads versus just the one in the middle. So um, that's a nice way to get a little bit of an extra stretch as well. So the next one is just going to be taking your hands, opening them and closing them nice and wide. Again, kind of to open up the chest a little bit. So putting your hands out and then just pulling them all the way back. So you can see how I'm opening up my chest. And this one's more of a movement. So we're just gonna do one 30 second um, of this, but just kind of going up and back. Little pause at the end, just to open up that chest area. So this is still a stretch, even though it's a movement, but you're not going fast. You're not bouncing, you're holding and making it a nice smooth kind of motion open and close okay so now we're going to go to the upper back a little bit of the lower back um, one that i like that kind of stretches out the whole thing is sitting in the chair and just rolling down this way 
So if you're really flexible, you can touch the ground. If you're not super flexible, you can just kind of put your hands on your shins and then um, just hold that stretch for about 30 seconds. So this one's a nice one because um, you have a nice little curl in your back. Usually if you see some of my stretching stuff with the back, I say don't do the curl. This is one where you want to curl that back all the way down because that's just going to open up each segment. So it's really nice. And then curl back up as well. So you're really just opening up each segment Three, one at a time. So we're going to do that one more time, just stretching all the way down, touching the floor if we can, rest your neck, make sure that you're not holding your neck up because then that's going to put a stress on it. So just let everything hang down and relax. And you'll kind of notice a lot of times in, as you hold it, you'll go down a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. So that's always nice. Just holding that stretch. And then as the countdown starts, you can slowly roll back Three, up. So it's two, just coming one, back up for that nice roll. So now we're gonna kind of go into the upper back, the thoracic area of stretching. So I like doing two, my hands up on top like this. And so then this time we're gonna do a little rotation. So you're taking that elbow and kind of going towards the knee. So this one, we're not gonna hold it um, for a long time just hold it for about three seconds. So we'll go through the 30 second stretch, but we're just gonna do these one 30 second um, set instead of doing it twice. So just a little pause in between. This kind of just helps stretch that upper back, that thoracic area. So then you come back up, kind of shake it out. The next one is gonna be side bending in that same position. So bringing the hands back up, and then just kind of bending over to the side. So this one, you wanna keep your back fairly straight. You're not curling forward. You're really just going to the side. So this one again is more of a continuous smooth stretch versus actually holding it. So if you wanna hold it for you know three to five seconds on each side, you can, but you don't have to. You can just kind of go um, side to side if you want to. All right, so I'm gonna pause real quick because now I'm gonna kind of get on the ground. Okay, so that was a quick cut. Now we're on the ground. You have your strap or your belt, towel, leash, whatever you need, um, a pillow so you're nice and comfy. And now we're gonna go into the hips and the upper leg. So I'm gonna start it again. It's gonna give us a little, about five seconds. And so I'm gonna do a groin stretch now. So the butterfly is a really good one for the groin stretch. So just putting your feet together, using your elbows to push your legs down and then lean forward, but really keeping your back straight. So if you have to start out here, if you're really tight, that's okay, you can do that. But the closer your heels get in towards you, the more of a stretch it is. But if you're really flexible and you cannot come all the way here, put the elbows on your inner thighs Three, and just two, lean forward for one, that stretch. Rest. Give everything a little break, a little shake out, and we're gonna do that one more time. Three, so what two, some people like one. to do is they come in, one. do that little stretch, and instead of pushing here, they like to kind of bring their hands forward so they can kind of creep them forward a little bit, maybe give themselves a target so they know that they're stretching a little bit more. That's fine too, but I find that people tend to start curling their back, and then that takes away from the stretch a little bit. So I like to keep my back straight and lean forward with my hips, you can do it however you would like to. So um, whichever one's more comfortable, Three, or you two, can change it up a little one. bit if you want to. So now you're gonna take your stretch strap, towel, belt, or something like that, and then put it around your foot and lie all the way down for a hamstring stretch. You can bend this one up, keep the legs straight, and then pull it up. Try not to bend this knee and if you want to pull your toes down a little bit, that'll help get the calves a little bit as well. So just getting that nice stretch in there. So just holding it and make sure that this is nice and locked out. So then Three, you're not two, bending that knee and not one. getting that stretch. I'll switch sides back and forth. You don't have to, you can just do them both Three, on one side two, if you want to. One. And then Exercise again, one. coming back up. The, the reason I like to bend the other side is because it takes a little bit pressure off your back. 
Some people want to put it straight down. If you don't really have any back issues, that's okay. You can definitely do that. Um, but I, I like it bent up just because I feel like it takes that pressure off of your back. You can get a little bit more stretch comfortably in there. Um, and don't feel like you have to crank it all the way up. Again, you just want to feel that nice Three, stretch two, through there. One, and then we're going to come back down and then we're going to stretch each one again. So putting it, looping it around your Three, foot, two, keeping that knee bent one, up for comfort, one. coming up and keeping that leg nice and straight. So just holding it there. And again, if you if you're up here like this, you're not really getting those calf muscles um, with the stretch. But if you pull your toes down with that strap, you're going to feel a stretch in your calves as well. And then right behind the knee because those hamstrings cross this way and those calf muscles cross this way. So they both cross that knee joint. So this is a really great stretch and you can make it a combination two, stretch if one. you want to. Rest. And then we're going to switch over to the other side and do the hamstring on this side one more time. Three, mm -hmm. Just nice and relax. One. Exercise one. And then bringing it up. So the one after this, we're gonna go into an IT band stretch and the setup's really the same, except you're gonna just do a little bit um, of a change of where your leg position is. So that one's gonna be pretty easy just to transition right into doing. So just nice holding that stretch. As you're halfway through, if you feel like you can pull a little bit more, that's fine. Again, as long as it's not painful, Three, that's really two, good. One, rest. And then come down and rest. So again, it's the same kind of setup. You're gonna have that, but this time I'll keep that knee down so it one, doesn't get in the way. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Bring the leg straight up, keep the knee straight, and now you're gonna just pull it across your body. So if you checked out my Super Joe shirt and you like it, you can go to inkpixie.com. They have a whole bunch of cool things that they can personalize for you. They have shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, all that kind of stuff is really cool. So um, you can be super like me too. Don't be jealous. And so you should be feeling that stretch on the outside there. And then coming down. And then looping Three, it on the other side, one, bringing that leg down so it doesn't get in the way, come up and then drop it over. So again, here's kind of where you feel that stretch, that IT band, it, it comes all the way up to the hip here and it's your tensor fascia lata when it's up here. And then it turns into that IT band and it goes all the way across the knee. So some people feel it a lot in their hip, some people feel it down at their knee, some people feel it all over, but the key Three, is when you're two, stretching, one, don't bring your back up. So I'll show you a little bit when we go back to the other side. You really want to keep the top of your back Three, nice and flat. So when we come one, up exercise one, and come over, you don't want to roll your whole body over because then you're taking away from the stretch a little bit. You want to try and keep that hip down, your back, lower back down, and just bring that leg up and across. Now some people, might not be able to come up this high. They might only be able to go here, but you can still feel that stretch here as well. If people are super flexible, they might have to come up even higher and go over. And again, that's fine. You just put Three, whatever angle is two, comfortable one, for you. Rest. And then one more over here. Three, and then two, bringing one. it up. Exercise one. And then coming over nice, stretch there. So again, if you're feeling it here, that's where you're supposed to feel it. If you're feeling it up on top, your leg's probably not in the quite the right position. If you're feeling it in your hamstrings, you're probably just coming up a lot and not over enough. So really try and get it so you're feeling it right through here into that booty just a little bit in that hip area. Getting that nice Three, stretch. Two, one. So now we're going to roll over onto our stomachs and this time you want to take that loop and put it all the way around your ankle. Three, two, Pull it up this one. way and we're going to stretch our quad muscle. So with the quads, I'm going to pull this around a little bit. So this is what it's going to look like. Make sure you get comfortable and that belt just sits over your shoulder. And then you're just going to pull until you get that heel almost towards your bottom. So just for the sake of this is a little bit harder position to get into. I'm going to stretch 
both I'm going to stretch one side twice in a row instead of alternating back Three, and forth but two, what you can see one. is your heel doesn't have to go all the way towards your booty it might if you're super flexible but you don't feel like you have to crank Three, it up there two, so again one. just around your shoulder pulling this way make sure you're comfortable if you need to lie all the way down that's fine if you want to pull more you can too but this is the stretch should be in your quad and that front thigh is where you should feel it. Um, if you have uh, tight knee joints, you might feel it in your joint before you feel it in your quad and that's okay. This is just going to help you get some more flexibility in your knee in general as well. But it's really to focus on that quad. So now I'm just going to switch over to the other leg and pull it around all the way looping it around and then make sure it's fairly high and then just again pulling on that strap so you don't have to crank on it but if you're pretty flexible you want to get that heel as close to your bottom as you can but again like I said if you've got some arthritis or some knee problems you might only be able to get to about right here before you feel it and you might feel it in that joint before you actually feel it in the quad muscle three two and then just kind of relax it back down but again if you are getting too much pressure on your elbows you can just kind of relax two, down one. on the pillow like this while you're stretching so make sure that you're keeping everything else nice and comfortable and that you're not really risking injuring anything else um, while you're trying to stretch something so if you're not comfortable you can't get in a comfortable position um, check out some of my other videos. I have usually a whole video for just quad stretches or IT band stretches and things like that. So you can go check it out and then pick the one that works best for you. Because everybody is a little different. Alright. So now we're going to go into the lower legs to get our calf muscles a little bit here. So you can still take the strap and now put it around the ball of your foot. This time, just relax and then pull your toes as far up towards you as you can. And again, you should feel that stretch right through there. So just a nice pull, um, shouldn't be painful. Some people, if they have ankle issues, they might feel it in their ankle joint before they feel it in the calf. So again, if this one doesn't quite work for you, there's a bunch of different ways to stretch it that you can try it a different way and see if it helps. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do this one. And so that's the Three, great thing two, about stretching one. and just pull, get that stretch, is you can stretch in a whole bunch of different ways and still get a beneficial stretch, but it just might be a little different than what somebody shows you. So um, if you're working with your physical therapist or a trainer or some kind of health professional and they're showing you how to do something and it just doesn't feel right, let them know because they should be able to show you a different way to do it and stretch it out. Um, and if they don't, maybe you should ask somebody else. Two, one. Yeah. A little rest with that one. And if you don't have a loop with whatever you're using, if it's like a towel or something, Three, you can just two, put one. it this way Exercise and one. hold on with both. So still just getting that pull, um, protecting that back if you need to lie all the way down. You can if you feel like this is uncomfortable or if you're kind of slouching a little bit, um, you can lie down and still hold on to whatever you're holding on to and pull if it's long enough. Um, so again, if you've got some issues going on, you can always modify things to help protect you and not risk injuring something else. Three, two, one, rest. All right, I'm gonna do one more on this side. So the important with the calf Three, stretch two, is to keep one. your leg locked out. So my knee is straight for this because the next one we're gonna go into, we wanna bend the knee. And so the, to stretch out the calf, you really want that knee to be straight, no bend in there. So if there's a bend in there, you're changing the stretch just a little bit. And um, you definitely wanna keep that knee straight when you're stretching those calf muscles because again, they, they come and they cross that knee joint. So that knee needs to be straight to get a really good stretch out of it. So now you're going to do the same kind of stretch, except your knee is going to be bent, and this is going to stretch Three, the soleus two, muscle, one. which is underneath the calf. So 
still getting it about on the ball of your foot. Now I'm pulling up, but this time my knee is bent. And that soleus muscle sits right underneath um, the calf or the gastroc muscles. And it's a nice flat muscle. And it actually looks like a fish. And soleus apparently means fish, maybe in Latin, some other language. And that's why it's called that is because they originally thought it looked like a fish. Three, two, Fun fact for you. One. So again, keeping the bee, the bee, Three, the knee two, bent this time, one. and then just Exercise pulling one. those toes up towards you. Sometimes with the soleus stretch, again, people tend to feel it sometimes in their ankle joint before they actually feel it in the soleus. Again, that's okay because that just means that you don't have quite as much flexibility in your ankle. So this is still equally as important because you want to get this loosened up so then you can stretch out those muscles as well. So um, even if you feel it here, you still want to stretch it. Nice big pull there, holding that stretch. For me, I feel it a little bit lower, but you might feel it up a little bit higher too, but I feel mine about right there uh, when I stretch mine. And I actually feel it better on my left side here versus on my right. I do feel it in my ankle just a little bit. I've had lots of sprains um, on my ankle, and so that joint usually feels Three, it just a little bit two. more which means I should really be stretching it out a lot. Three, two, one, exercise one. So last one for the soleus, just getting that nice stretch in there. Um, if you feel like it's, you're getting really tired uh, pulling on this, again, there's a way you can stretch out that soleus standing up and just using the floor to kind of stretch it. So if you feel like your arms are getting tired with this one, make sure you check out those stretches so you can try it a different way if you want to. Because again, you don't want to wear out something up here when you're trying to stretch out something there. So the next stretch is gonna be for your anterior tibialis muscles. This is the front ones here. We're gonna stretch them together. Um, and so basically you're just coming on your heels like this with your toes flat down. So you want your toenails to be down on the ground and then just pull up where your knees come off of the ground a little bit. So this is a pretty easy stretch to do to stretch those. Um, you don't necessarily have to do the 30 seconds because your arms might get worn out. But again, there's a couple different ways you can do this one. Um, if the arms get too tired with this, for the second 30, I'm gonna show you um, doing it kind of laying out, almost like a cobra type of position for um, yoga, if that's what you're looking for. So you can do it this way as well. So again, whichever one is more comfortable for you. See how my foot's kind of rolled out though? That's gonna get those anterior tibialis muscles. If you turn your foot inwards, that's gonna get the posterior tibialis muscles. So. Um, if you want to alternate back and forth, you can, but you don't have to. Again, if your arms feel tired, like they're starting to wear out, um, Three, then you can kind of two, change the position one. just a little bit. So I'm going to pause real quick. The last couple ones are really just going to be general stretching, not quite as intense with these, not really focusing on one body part, but getting a whole body stretch, doing some deep breathing. I'm not gonna talk as much with this one because I really want you to focus on the breathing and the cooling down portion. So even though we're still breaking it up, this is kind of a cooling down component of it. So I'm gonna get um, on all fours and we're gonna kind of do a cat dog position. So I'm gonna start it back again. And I'm just gonna move the pillow out a little bit. So this is quadruped or all fours and you're just gonna come up into a cat where you tuck your chin in and arch your back. Just hold it for about 10 seconds and then you're gonna drop it down and bring your chin up. So this is kind of the dog position or the cow position or the camel. They have a whole bunch of different names, but just kind of gently going back and forth. So the next set, I'm gonna not talk as much and I'm gonna focus on my breathing a little bit. 
So really doing some deep breathing this time to really get those muscles to stretch out while you're doing Three, it. Three, two, one. So Exercise one. Cat tucking in. Breathing out into the dog. So the next one is going to be a prayer stretch. Um, you can do this with your arms out, or you can do this with your arms back. But again, focus on the breathing with this one. So you can come down this way. Or you can put your hands back this way. I personally like putting my arms out because it helps stretch my shoulders as well. And you can kind of go at a little bit of an angle too. So I'm going to do that for this one. So coming down, nice deep breathing. You can stretch over an angle. This will get your lats a little bit. And then come back over. And get this side a little bit. Three, two, one. So the last stretch, we're just going to do one, and it's going to be laying out straight as you can, pushing your toes and your feet one way and your arms the other way. So it's almost like if you were just getting pulled in opposite directions just to stretch everything out and really take some nice deep breaths. And push, push, push as you breathe out. So there you have it. You should be Gumby by now. So that was your whole body stretch routine. Hopefully you feel loosey-goosey like I do. If you'd like to help support my channel, make sure and click up here. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking down here. And remember, be safe, get flexible, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.